Hey friends, how are you doing? In this time of cabin fever and general insanity in the world, I wanted to encourage you guys with a, a message that I believe God dropped into my heart on how we can overcome fear in these tumultuous times that we are in. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. That's you and me. Do you believe in Jesus? Then he's given you power to salvation according to the gospel. Romans 1 17 continues, for in it, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You and I as Christians are called to live a life of faith. Let's pause for one second and, and pray. Dear Lord, I pray that you'd help each one of us in this time rise up in our faith, be strong and recognize your power in our lives to overcome the fear that surrounds us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I have four short principles I wanted to share with you guys, uh, and I would encourage you, please, to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. And you see, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, what we find if we start in verse 20, we're finding Moses is talking to the people, the next generation, uh, and he's giving an account of some of the challenges that people have had along the way. But he's saying specifically from verse 20, Moses says this, Deuteronomy 1 verse 20, I said to you, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. Look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. As the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear or be discouraged. Friends, do you realize that God has set the land of promise before you and before me? But it's not going to happen. We're not going to get there unless we go up and possess it and learn how to bring heaven to earth in our lives. Amen. So the first a uh, principle that we need to recognize is that you and I, we have to fight to enter our promised land. I'm not talking about fighting with the karate or the origami, as some would say, I'm an expert in the origami. No, I'm not talking about that kind of fight, but I am talking about a fight of faith. You see, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. So point number one is you have to fight to enter the promised land. What does your promised land look like? Maybe it's a land of uh, blessing and freedom, which is what we hear about in the Bible, but maybe you haven't experienced that yet in your life. Let me encourage you. You're going to have to fight to get it. You might have to fight the fight of faith to overcome depression in your life. You might have to fight the fight of faith to overcome sickness in your life. You might have to fight the fight of faith uh, to enter in to that business, to that marriage, to have children, whatever it is in your life that is a promise of God, there's going to be a battle in your personal life to go up and possess that thing. So recognize that that is a normal part of my life and as your life as Christians, that we're actually warriors, not warriors in the in the realm of the flesh, but warriors in the realm of the spirit. OK, so number one, point number one, recognize you're in a fight. Point number two, and this is a big one. There are giants in the land. There are giants in the land. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter one and let's carry on in verse 29. Verse 29 says this. The people had gone and they'd looked. I'm sorry. Verse 28 says this, where can we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we've seen the sons of the Anakim are there. I don't know who the sons of the Anakim are, but I think they were quite scary giants. You know, when David took on Goliath, he was, he was tiny compared to the size of Goliath. Goliath was a champion, a captain, 
this huge, great guy. But David knew and recognized that he was not fighting uh, in the natural. He was fighting in the realm of the spirit to take on a giant that was standing between him and his future. Let me encourage you, people. There are giants between you and your future. What is that giant? Well, I guess it's going to be different for each one of us. Maybe you've got a giant of uh, uh, depression. Maybe you've got a giant of poverty. Maybe you've got a giant of mental illness, of stress. Maybe you've got a giant to do with your past that you need to overcome. But friends, let me encourage you. The giants, they, they can look scary. That's, not, that's nothing wrong with recognizing that. But let me encourage you. It says here, verse 29, Then I said to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. Verse 30, the Lord your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. People, in this time, we have to recognize that God is for us and will fight for us. So God is for you. If you are the just, if you are believing in Jesus and put your faith in him, then he is for you and he will fight for battles for us that we cannot overcome in our own humanity, in our own strength. So let me encourage you. Let's press into God in this time. Let's ask him to show us the giants in our life and let's believe God that he's going to overcome them. Okay, point number two uh, was there are giants in the land. Point number one, we have to fight to enter the promises of God. Number three is this recognize that God is looking for people who will respond to him in faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God for he is uh, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you want if you want to please God, guess what? The only way for you and I to please God is by faith. By faith. Amen. Luke 18 verse 8, we know Jesus said this, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find faith in the earth? God is looking for people who will respond to him in faith. Faith, according to Hebrews 11 verse 1, is this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you've ever flown on an aeroplane, let me encourage you, you've had faith. I guess many of you have never known or met the pilot of that aeroplane. But you've had faith as soon as you got on that plane that that pilot is going to take you from point A to point B. You don't know anything about the, the pilot. You don't know anything about his background. But you've had a, a, a sense of faith and trust that you're going to get from point A to B. Well, what greater pilot can you and I have in our lives than Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ is the pilot of my life and of your life. If you will trust him and if you will allow him to lead you in steps of faith, because I believe, I believe God that he's taking each one of us on this journey that's going up, up closer to him, up on the mountain with him, up in the realm of the spirit so that we can soar on the wind on the winds uh, with the wings of an eagle amen so point number two is recognize god is looking for people who will respond in faith and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him point number four and i'm done is this recognize that faith is the currency of the kingdom what do i mean by that a currency is a means of exchange Okay, money is a means of exchange by itself. You can do nothing with it. Uh, it doesn't. What does it profit a man that he gained the whole world but lose his soul? Right. That money is a means to exchange one thing to get something back. So if I want a loaf of bread, I give someone a euro and that person gives me back a loaf of bread. The euro in itself didn't do anything, but. By exchanging the euro, I get back a loaf of bread. What currencies are in the natural realm, faith is in the kingdom. 
So if you want anything from God, if you need peace, if you need to overcome fear, if you need to be set free from anxiety and worry and stress during these difficult times, you and I need to operate by faith, to exchange faith, to access the promises of God. You know, the Bible says in the, in the great uh, uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 11, the, the hall of faith, it talks about how all of the great heroes of the Bible operated by faith. Abraham moved by faith. Uh, David moved by faith. Joshua, Joshua took the, took the land by faith. Uh, Moses was moved by faith and, and obeyed God. The apostle Paul moved by faith. The, the disciples operating in faith. You and I are no different. By faith, you and I are going to overcome. We're going to see the promises of God. Let me encourage you. If we read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, Joseph did such and such a thing. By faith, Moses did such and such a thing. By faith, Daniel. By faith, Samson. By faith, Samuel. What would your name say in the book of Hebrews? What if they said, by faith, Jim, da, 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 da. fill in the gap for yourself in your own life. I believe that God is calling you and I into great adventures of faith. But you know what? We still have a free will. So who's up for entering in to the promises of God? Who's up for the battle? Who's up to take on those giants? Who's up to respond to God in faith? And who's up to exchange the currency of heaven, our faith, for the promises of God? Let me encourage you guys. Let's keep prayerful. Let's keep in worship during this time. Uh, keep connecting. Keep connecting to your friends and neighbours through the community groups at ICB and other means that there are that we can all be connected. But most importantly, stay connected with him. Stay connected by the Holy Spirit to the presence of Jesus. I need the presence of God in my life today more than I did yesterday. And I bet you do too. So let's seek God during this time and believe God for great things. And now let's just pray together against this filthy coronavirus disease that is destroying people's lives around the world. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break the power of this filthy thing. We pray protection over our families, protection over our communities. We plead the blood of Jesus over our church, the blood of Jesus over Barcelona, the blood of Jesus over the nations. Father, we pray that you would intervene, that you would rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for life, strength, and health, and faith in these great times of uh, unprecedented anxiety. Help us as your people to shine as a light in our day and generation in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. We're praying for you. Uh, we love you. Can't wait to see you all in person and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Stay in touch. God bless. Amen.